So I was playing someone on EDO Pro earlier today who was very much a casual player, and it got me thinking that, you know what, why don't I talk about the differences between competitive and casual Yu-Gi-Oh? Because this guy wasn't sure, and I told him I'd make a video about it, because I think it'd actually be a really interesting topic. So let's dive on into it, shall we? Smash the ever-living crap out of that subscribe button so that we can get to 700 subscribers and eventually 1,000 subscribers. We are very close to 700. So share the channel around. Share it with your cat, your dog, your neighbor that you think's an asshole. Share it with share it with your girlfriend or your boyfriend. I don't care. Just smash the subscribe button and the bell, too. Be sure to hit that ding-dong taco bell so that we can get to our dream goal. So, anyway, without any further ado, what is the difference between competitive and casual Yu-Gi-Oh! So let's go ahead and focus on casual, then we'll focus on competitive, because there really is a big gap between the two that I think not a lot of people realize, or they think they're competitive when they're actually casual, um, you know, things like that. So with casual Yu-Gi-Oh!, obviously you're going to be playing with your own rules. You're going to be playing with you know, whatever cards you want to play with. You're going to not really be focusing on the competitive meta. You're going to play whatever deck you feel is the most fun, whether that's Dinomorphia, Heroes, Beaver Warrior, Beatdown. Like, you're, you're going to play whatever cards you feel like playing. And you're not going to probably make the most optimal plays. You're not going to build the most optimal deck, right? You're going to play stuff like what my opponent was playing on EDO Pro earlier, you know, Bottomless Trap Hole, Regular Trap Hole, Mirror Force, Drowning Mirror Force, Magic Cylinder, like these cards that you would never see in a competitive meta in Yu-Gi-Oh! And, you know, there's nothing wrong with being casual. I'm not going to sit here as the competitive player that I am who's been playing competitive for over 10 years now at this point and try and tell you how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! That's not my place. I'm not going to be that asshole player who says, oh, you're a casual, you're a scrub, and this and that. You know, obviously I think the joke is funny whenever people say, yeah, I'm a casual scrub because the typical thing with casual Yu-Gi-Oh! players is that they are scrubs, that they are bad at the game. And that's not always the case. I've met players who play this game casually, they just may go to locals, they don't necessarily go to regionals or YCSs, nationals, what have you, and they are very solid players. You know, they might play a couple cheesy cards here and there, but yet they're playing very solid decks. You know, they're, they're, they're making good plays, but they see themselves as casual. One good friend of mine, uh, who I actually have been friends with since high school, recently reconnected due to Yu-Gi-Oh!, which has been really cool. He even said himself, I'm a casual scrub. He plays Dark Worlds, he plays Crawlers, he plays things that he enjoys playing. And I always bust his balls, because I'm like, nah, you need to be playing Sword Soul, you need to be playing Based, aka Badass Sexy Engine deck, as we call it on the channel. You know, he doesn't play these Tier 1 or even Tier 2, hell, even Rogue decks. He plays the decks that are unviable garbage, <laughs> which... I mean, he'll tell you firsthand he does, and I give him a hard time for it, but we're friends, so, like, it's fine. It's different if I don't know you, and I'm like, oh, God, you're playing Bottomless Trap Pole in your hero deck? Like, you suck at this game. Like, I'm not going to do that to somebody. Um, but, you know, you also have casual communities who they're like, you know, oh, Dragoons needs to be banned, and, you know, they, they act like that they understand these competitive cards when, in reality, you really don't. And that's not to be offensive. It's the fact that, if you don't go to your local OTS, if you don't go to regionals, if you don't go to YCSs, if you don't study the competitive metagame or what is competitive and you don't understand it, you know, you may say Dragoons is a broken card, which it is, but if you're saying this needs to be banned and this doesn't and whatever, you can make the argument Dragoons needs to be banned, but yet if you understand the competitive meta and if you understand the competitive mindset of a competitive player, you'll understand that Verte is the problem. Verte and Akonda should be banned. Not Dragoons necessarily. Maybe Dragoons will be banned in the future, but for now, the biggest issue with Dragoons is Verte and Akonda. The biggest issue with DPE is Anaconda. If you have to hard draw the Fusion Destiny, you can make the argument that DPE isn't as big of a problem. Still very broken cards, and I think that they should be new they should be hit in some way at some point in Yu-Gi-Oh!'s landscape, whether it's a year from now, five years from now, whatever. But those cards do need to be hit. But if you're a casual player, you may just see that card's broken. It's like, oh, it needs to be banned. And blah, 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 blah. I mean, you you see jokes all the time on Facebook, especially in Zodiac Duels, where they're, like, taking screenshots of, like, you know, casual Yu-Gi-Oh! communities who, you know, just play Blue Eyes and Dark Magician decks all day and think that they're the best players in the room. 
uh, when yet there are a lot of other decks that are much better in the game. Um, so again, nothing wrong with being casual. If you're casual, you may enjoy things like Master Duel, where I think it's a bucket of shit, because I think in reality it is a bucket of shit. Um, but I've made countless videos on that. But if, if you're casual and that's how you want to play, then by all means play. Here is where the issue comes in if you want to be competitive. And this actually segues perfectly because I'm already about five minutes in talking about being a casual player. If you are a competitive player, you or even if you want to be, you need to understand that in order to improve, you have to go onto YouTube, you have to go on TCG Player, Pojo, Duelist Grounds, my videos preferably, you know, what have you, whatever your best way is of learning, and play those best decks. Build them, learn the combos, take the time to learn them, take the time to study the meta, and realize, hey, Artifact Scythe and DPE is very broken right now. The Adventure Engine, or excuse me, the Adventure Engine, the Adventure Engine, like that, that, that doesn't sound anything correct. <laughs> the Adventure Monsters, the Adventure Engine is very broken. If you don't know what the Adventure Cards are, if you don't know what DPE is, Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer, if you don't know what these cards are, you're very behind. You're clearly not keeping up with the competitive landscape. Again, that's not a bad thing. I'm just saying if you do not know about these things, you need to get caught up. That's not to say that you can't learn. You very well can. You can look at articles on TCG Player, which are very good. I don't see a lot of people talking about those articles. The articles are really solid. I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, my videos, MCOL 40s. Uh, MCOL 40, I feel, is the only other competitive YouTuber at this point because everybody else is on Master Duel <laughs> and getting that ad revenue. Um, but you need to look at these competitive videos. You need to look at like tier lists, like what I just did a couple days ago, discussing the meta as a whole. If you're playing a deck that I saw as unviable, you may need to switch your decks if you want to be a competitive player. That's not to say you got to go out and spend hundreds of dollars on cards. You could just play on EDO Pro or Dueling Book, what have you, and just get better that way and never spend money on the game. You know, you can't afford $120 a piece Prosperities. Okay, play them in Dueling Book or EDO Pro, YGO, Omega, whatever, and learn the game that way. You know, the hero player I was going against earlier today, he was playing things like Bottomless, Regular Trap Hole, Mirror Force, Radiant Mirror Force, but then yet he's playing Forbidden Droplet. And I was so fucking confused because I'm like, you're playing this very good competitive card, but then yet you're playing this casual stuff. Why? It doesn't make any sense. Now, granted, this casual player could have thought, hey, Forbidden Drop is a really good card. It's a strictly better version of Forbidden Chalice, arguably. And he could have just thrown it into his hero deck. But that that is really the big line where competitive and casual diverge. If you want to truly be competitive, if you want to know what it's like to be in that competitive landscape, you got to go to your OTS. You've got to play test with competitive decks online. You've got to learn combos inside and out. You need to play test, play test, play test, play test. Just getting better at the game in general, you want to play test like crazy. You know, make those dual notes in EDO Pro or YGO Omega, meta only. You know, and if you go against something like Trap Tricks, fine. We'll play the one asshole on EDO Pro today that wants to play a dog shit deck and, you know, get shreked on by Flunderies or Based or whatever, you know. It, it's going to happen. You got to learn how Sword Souls work. You got to learn how all these decks work and function if you want to understand how to beat them. You have to play these decks yourself so that you can learn how to beat them. Where are their choke points with hand traps? If you're not playing any hand traps in your deck or if you don't know what the meaning of hand trap is, you're way behind the eight ball, pimp. You need to know what Ghost Ogre does. You need to know what Ash Blossom does. And that's not to say that, oh, you got to learn all these cards if you want to be good. It's just that if you want to have the best possible chance of doing well competitive, you need to understand how these competitive cards work. Back in Zodiac Tier 0 format, when I topped with uh, Trickstars in 2017, there was a guy that I saw at this uh, regional. It was in Kissimmee, Orlando, Florida, where most of the regionals in Florida are held. And I was uh, hanging out with a good friend of mine. Shout out to you, Big Bruce ninety four, aka Derek. <laughs> that regional was a good time. And there was this dad there that was that had played with his two kids in the past. I remember the dad was super competitive. Like my dad, my dad years ago beat one of the kids with Chamber. This is how far we're going back. And the dad looks at his son all serious. He goes, "Son, you'll never lose to Chamber again." Like he would fix his son's deck so he'd never lose to Chamber again. It's like. Bro, you can't prepare for every matchup possible. Like, you got to know as a competitive player, that's going to happen. The dad was super competitive. And then my buddy Derek is talking to the dad about Zodiac, this tier zero deck that everybody knew about in the room. And he's like, I don't know what Zodiacs do. 
And I was like, whoa, that's a massive turn of events considering that you were super competitive the last time I saw you. Now you don't even know what the best deck in the room does. That shows you right there that either someone quit the game, they just you know hang out with their kids, hang out with their friends, whatever, or they're just casual. If if you want to be competitive, you need to know what the best decks in the room do. So a starting point, if you if you watch this video and right afterward you thought, okay, I want to be competitive, here's what you do. Number one, learn what base does, aka badass sexy engine deck as we call it here on the channel. 60 card engines, understand the deck. It's a very crazy, complicated combo deck. At least watch some combo videos and understand what the deck does and what cards it plays. Understand what Sword Soul does. Understand what Phantom Knights do. Understand what the Brave Engine, aka Adventure Engine, is. Look at what the OCG is doing. Look at OCG, you know, um, uh, deck lists and formats and things like that. Even play old formats too, like Go Control or Airblade Turbo or Teledad in 2008. Understand why cards like Sakuratsu Armor are a pile of shit now. Because one for one trades don't work anymore in Yu Gi Oh! They just don't, unless you're in a very simplified game state. Understand what Elder Lich do. Maybe you want to be a control player. Learn all aspects of Yu-Gi-Oh. Learn the control decks. Learn the rogue decks. Learn the heavy combo decks. Learn the mid-range decks like Flunderies. I don't play heavy combo decks because I'm not going to do well with heavy combo decks. So I play mid-range. I play Flunderies, and I do well because of it. So guys, let me know if I left anything out. Am I just totally off kilter here? Do I not know what I'm talking about? If you want to be a competitive player, I think that this video is a good start. And let me know if you want me to keep on making videos like this. I do enjoy talking about the meta. I enjoy being a competitive player. I enjoy being casual from time to time. But at the end of the day, I like that competitive mindset. I like being able to counter my opponents and feel that, hey, I'm the best player in the whole damn room. So guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.